Hey, it's Jeff Green. Thanks for tuning in to the video blog today. Today we have the conclusion or part two of my interview with Brian Westbury. Stick around. We'll be right back. And do you believe we're in a secular bull market? I do. I absolutely do. I think it started back in, uh, in early 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's when we bottomed. Uh, it's By the way, it's when we changed mark-to-market -market accounting, which ended the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. I, there's a lot of people that think that that, that crisis uh, was saved, the government saved us. In reality, that's not the case. We, did, we started quantitative easing in September of 2008. We passed TARP in October of 2008. And the market fell another 40 percent. It went. We finally changed this really dumb accounting rule that was making banks go broke. Uh, and and once we changed that, this recovery began. And and I believe the real driving force behind this recovery is not government. It's not quantitative easing. It's not Janet Yellen. It's not whatever Congress is doing or or even the president. What's really driving it is entrepreneurship, right. innovation. I mean. Uh, fracking. Uh, it, it, nine years ago, it took us 70 days to frack a well, or right. not us, but the frackers. The guys that frack. Yeah, yes. Um, and now it's taken them seven to ten. It's a massive gain in, in efficiency and productivity. The the iPhone X is coming out this mm -hmm. year. The X means ten, right? right. And, and it's only ten years old. The cloud, smartphones, uh, apps, apps, all of I've this. Been around for six years or yeah, so. Yeah, right. All of this is so. That's what's been really driving profits, and and I think we're in this secular bull market that's being driven by technology. And right now we are nowhere near uh, an overvaluation stance. And by the way, what's fascinating is you don't have to listen hard, right? <laughs> Every day you hear some doom and gloom story, yeah. and and people, clients, investors mm -hmm. are are nervous, yep. and that's not the way people feel at the peak of a bull market. Right. But they feel euphoric. They're they're, they're bulletproof. Right. That's when you get worried. Yeah. And speaking of which, you know, I get a lot of that from my clients. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jeff, things seem to be going really good. When's the next 08 coming? Right. When's exactly. the next you know worst financial crisis in 100 years? Right. So I hear a lot of that from my clients. What do you see anything out there? Uh, any road signs mm -hmm. that um, may be red? flags for right. bad economies ahead? Yeah, that, so there's always four threats to prosperity, in my opinion. Number one, and it, this is the one that I worry about in a sense the most, not, not like today, but over time, is when the Fed tightens too much. And so we all know the Fed's now starting to sell bonds from their portfolio. They're raising interest rates. The good news is they're going so slow, and, and even if uh, President Trump appoints a new Fed chair, uh, uh, instead of Janet Yellen, they will continue to go slow. Uh, so right now there's no threat from that. So that's number one, uh, Federal Reserve policy. Mm -hmm. Number two threat would be a tax hike. Uh, and we're talking about tax cuts, right. not hiking. Uh, number three would be a trade war, trade protectionism. That worries me a little bit because President Trump has banged the drums, yes. tariffs and things like that. But so far, we, we've avoided that. And I think in the end, he, he's using that more as a negotiating tool mm -hmm. rather than he, he's not really a protectionist. At least that's not what I believe. So that threat, and number four, so, so remember, so these are four threats to prosperity. Uh, too, too tight a Fed, tax hikes, trade, trade protectionism like the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act back in the 30s. Um, and then finally, just government spending and regulation the bigger government gets, the more it regulates, the harder it is for the economy to grow. Uh, we've already gotten rid of 800 regulations this year. Federal government employment is going down. Right. And last year it was going up during this time. And so I, I would argue those threats, they, in, other, in other words, I sleep pretty well at night. Those are the things that I worry about. And, and I believe it's going to take the Fed at least two years to raise interest rates too much, if you will, they, they, and 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 so therefore, this eight-year-long recovery will end up being over ten years long, and that'll be the longest recovery in U.S. history. We're already in the longest recovery. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's the third longest, third right, longest right, now. right now. The longest is ten years, so we're getting there. Okay. We're getting really close. We're over eight now. But uh, I think you add another, tack another two more mm -hmm. years on this, it'll become the longest one. You mentioned tax reform. Mm -hmm. uh, we all want personal tax reform, of right. course. What, what, how do you think that relates back to corporate America, right. uh, earnings, et cetera? Right. So 
obviously the, the Trump administration and some people, some members of Congress are uh, really have, you know, they, they want a big to do. They want, they want to cut personal tax rates. They want to cut corporate tax rates, state and local mm -hmm. tax deductibility gone. You know, so there's big plans for tax reform. And I'm not going to say it's impossible. It can get done because they've now set the stage to do it with 51 votes. It'll be around for 10 years, which, by the way, some people want to, they, they say it has to be permanent. Well, it, taxes get changed every two or three years yeah. in Washington. So 10 years to me is permanent. Right. So that's okay. Um, I, I'm, I, I, it's hard to get things through this Congress. So what I'm, what I, what I'm kind of stumbling over here is that I kind of, I wish I didn't have to say this, I kind of think the personal side of the tax reform mm -hmm is going to kind of get left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. We will have corporate tax cuts, and that's a real positive because that will immediately boost after-tax corporate profits, which will help the stock market go up. Um, we'll also bring investment back to the United States. And it's not the repatriation that, that does it. It's the lower tax rate. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, Average corporate tax rate in Europe is 18.8%. Our tax rate is 35 right. So. It, it, where do you want to leave money? It's pretty clear you want to leave it in Europe where it's taxed way less. So if we can bring that rate to 20%, I think American companies will decide, hey, the difference between 18.8 and 20 is nothing, uh, or in the big scheme of things, we're going to have more money here. They'll end up investing more here. So right. it's, it's not repatriation that's going to lead to it. It's lower tax rates. So I'm, I'm excited about that. By the way, they will pay for themselves too um, because uh, higher after-tax corporate profits means we mean, yes. mean we get higher stock prices. Right. Higher stock prices mean there's more capital gains, um, and companies bring more money here. They're going to pay more. So net net, in the end, I think government actually raises money by cutting corporate tax rates. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Ryan, thanks yeah, very much. Appreciate thank you, it. Jeff. Right, absolutely. So I hope you enjoyed the special interview with Brian Westbury. If you have any questions for Brian specifically, shoot us an email, give us a call, let us know. We'll try to get them answered for you. Thanks and have a great day.